Hello and welcome to a short video demonstrating how to get started with the use of DPA analyses and alerts. The rules and analysis engine lies at the heart of DPA's ability to provide near real-time visibility of the data received from DPA agents. For each analysis policy enabled, the incoming data is tested for compliance against a set of one or more simple or complex rules. The power of the analysis policies and the associated alerts enables administrators to quickly identify adverse conditions within monitored objects, thus permitting timely remediation. While analysis policies hold their real power in being applied as data is received, they may also be applied on a scheduled basis for less critical functions. The alerts generated may be published by a number of routes, for example email and SNMP traps or indeed viewed in the UI. And once an alert has been actioned, it may be acknowledged or annotated as to the actions taken. As usual, all processes shown are fully documented in the Installation and Administration Guide and the Product Guide available at the link shown. Additionally, from the Setup Guide, you may access further detailed assistance in administration of analysis policies and alerts. Let's see how this works. Clicking on Policies, Analysis Policies, we see that we open four tabs along the top indicating the various components of Analysis Policy Administration. These are the Analysis Policy Library, Custom Rule Templates, System Rule Templates, and Applied Analysis Policies. Out of the box, DPA provides a default analysis containing a small subset of the 15 most popular basic rules across a number of monitored devices or object types. Any given rule within a policy will only be applied to the appropriate objects. Under System Rule Templates, we can find many, many more rules which may be used as the basis of or added to your own policies. These rules may themselves be edited to your own bespoke requirements and saved under the Custom Rule Templates tab and used in further analysis policies. While the default policy may be used or modified, you may wish to create your own policies, ignoring the default. Let's see how we do this. Clicking on Create Policy, we'll give our first analysis policy a name and optionally a description. Our first job is to add a rule, and here we see that there are 164 inbuilt rule templates from which to choose. Focusing on Backup in the Find field, We'll select Backup Failed, Backup Job Over Running, and Backup Job Size Above Maximum. You may note that while Backup Job Failed would be a Boolean rule, the other rules would require some parameters specified within the rule to determine thresholds and boundaries. And we can see here where we specify these values for each parameter. Returning to the creation of the policy, we may now specify what action to take when conditions are met for these policy-based rules. The options being to email, run a script, generate SNMP traps, or place an entry in the event log. So let's click on Edit Policy-Based Actions to send an email and generate an SNMP trap. You will notice that under the Actions column, the annotation of Policy Based indicating the actions will apply to all rules defined within the policy. We may further refine this by clicking on this annotation and apply different parameters to each rule in turn. And on clicking OK, you will see that the action has now changed to be Rule Based. Let's now OK out of the editing of the policy. And here it is in the library displaying that there are three rules, but as yet, this policy has not been applied to any discovered objects. We'll do this now. Moving to Applied Analysis Policies. While policies cannot be applied to the groups level of the inventory, we can see that currently the default analysis policy is applied to the configuration group. 
but it is in the default state of off, with two remaining groups having no applied policies. Clicking on configuration, we can see that the members have inherited the policy of the parent. And now expanding into servers, the backup servers policy has been switched on. Let's change this to our newly created My Analysis policy from the default. At the bottom we have options to turn the policy on or off, to apply a different policy, to override a policy whereby we can change a specific attribute of the policy for this member or object, and we can also view the applied policy. To replace the default with My Analysis policy, we'll click on Apply a Difference Policy. Select the desired policy, and we can now see that this policy has been applied. Drilling down further into the backup servers, we can see that unless there has been a previous override, My Analysis Policy has been propagated throughout the members of the group. Returning to the Analysis Policy Library, it is now noted that My Analysis Policy now applies to 357 objects. Now, should any of the three rules or conditions trigger, an alert will be created in the manner previously specified within the rules. To view alerts in the UI, click on the Advisor tab. Having newly created this policy, an alert regarding the policy assignment has been posted. And subsequently, any further alerts may be viewed here. To complete the information loop, the facilities are provided to acknowledge the alert, thus removing it from the new status queue, and also to annotate the alert, perhaps with actions taken or for follow-up. So that's a very brief introduction to analysis policies and alerts, and I hope from this you can see that while the extensive reporting capabilities of DPA offer a huge advantage to the functional administrator in gaining insight into the activity on their systems, the applying of analysis policies gives a nearer real-time ability to monitor identified hotspots where immediate remediation may be required rather than waiting for the next scheduled report. Thank you for watching.